So after selecting my wood, I used a marking gauge to mark the line where I was going to cut my slit. That's going to hold the saw blade. The saw blade, incidentally, was part of a Japanese saw that I cut on a uh, bandsaw. Then here I'm using a chisel to make my knife wall a la Paul Sellers. I always like to make a knife wall before I cut anything freehand with a saw. Then I got out my rip saw and started to saw the kerf, a rather deep kerf, for the blade, like I mentioned earlier. A lot of this video I sped up so that it wouldn't be boring. Hopefully it's not boring at all. Anyway. As you can see, the uh, piece of blade fits nicely in the kerf that I cut. So after that... What did I do after that? I forgot. Oh yeah, that's right. After that, I started working on the fence. I marked off where I was going to cut the fence to make it L-shaped so that the bottom of the fence would come underneath the plane and I could get it right up close to the blade. And then again, I used my trusty marking gauges to cut lines where I was going to saw and got out the chisel again. That's not a chisel. Yes. Got out my marking knife. And cut those lines a little deeper so that it would be easier to make my knife wall with the chisel that I just got right now. There we go. And again, uh, let's see if we can speed this up a little bit here. Thank you. Made my knife wall. Got out the same rip saw again because I'm cutting with the grain. And then I started to cut that little L part into the fence. Uh, the magic of modern movie making. Everything goes so quickly. This build actually only took me one day, uh, a couple hours. So it wasn't that intensive. fit very nicely on the first try, luckily. Slides well and the fence came right up to the blade, which is exactly what I wanted. So then moving on, I had this uh, rod that I had taken off of an old baby stroller and um, it was made out of stainless steel and it just happened to have threaded holes on each end. So I figured I could use that for the guide rods of the plane. Here I'm just marking the location where I want the rod because I want it to sit above the blade obviously so it wouldn't interfere with it. And I took the parts over to the drill press and drilled the holes for the rod off camera. The rods were a little bit tight which is exactly what I wanted. Then after doing that I squared the holes on top, excuse me, to the top of the body so that I could drill holes in the top for screws that would hold the guide rods in place. And I thought about using inserts to hold the screws in place, but since I was using oak, I figured it would be easier just to tap the holes directly. I've done this before on oak and it works very well. Um, the screws are not going to be taken out again after I put them in, so there's no problem with the threads degrading on the inside. Also since the holes went through the ends of the rod, I wanted to make sure that I drilled a hole past the hole for the rods so that the screw would go all the way through and into the 
body. Here's a close-up of the threading process, tapping process, I should say. And I used uh, M6, 6 millimeter bolts. Uh, I live in Japan, so everything is metric over here. There are quarter-inch bolts for those of you watching in the U.S. or other countries that do not use the metric system. After I got that done, I put the fence over the body to see how it lined up, and it was looking good. And my next step was, I believe, to uh, use a small block plane, yes, to uh, put some chamfers on the edges. I wanted to do that before I put the guide rods in because the guide rods would interfere with the plane. I like putting chamfers on tools and actually anything I make. I think it makes the, the uh, project look real nice. Then I got out my small uh, Stanley number no. 4 smoothing plane just to take a little bit off that end and clean it up. These are old pieces of oak that I had laying around the shop, so they had gotten dirty and such. I then cut the rod in half using a hacksaw, off camera that is. And here I am just checking to see if the screws indeed thread in the way I hoped they would. Now this is a little bit of a tricky part, but I had to line up the rods so that the holes were perpendicular, such that I would be able to screw in the bolts from the top, and they would go through the rod and back into the wood again. And since it was a tight fit, I had to do it very delicately, but luckily it fit well, nice and tight. All I had to do was get out a uh, crescent wrench to get a little more leverage to be able to push it through the rod and into the body. And I am never taking it out again. <laughs> These rods will never come out. But that's good. That's exactly what I wanted. Since they are the guide rods on the body, I wanted to them. I wanted them to be uh, nice and tight, so that the fence wouldn't budge at all when I'm using the plane. So after that, I did a test fit, and since I drilled the same holes right through the fence. The holes in the fence were just a tad too tight. So I had to go over the drill press and enlarge them a little bit. And now it fits perfect. And I'll be able to slide back and forth with relative ease. The next step was to take the fence and to drill holes down through the top for thumb screws so that I could tighten the fence onto the guide rods. So I just eyeballed it and put a pencil mark where I thought the center of the holes were. And I took the fence over to the drill press to drill out small 3.3 millimeter holes. I didn't want to do this with a bit and brace because I wanted the holes to be perfectly perpendicular and I just didn't have confidence to do it with a brace and bit. So after I drilled the holes, I tapped them like I did earlier with the other holes and got out some M4 uh, four millimeter screws and tested it to see if they fit. And it fit like a charm. It always surprises me how much force 
thumb screws can apply. The fence didn't budge at all just by tightening it with uh, finger pressure. And that's how far I've got so far. Put the blade in to get an idea of how it'll look when it's all done. So far, so good. So, on to the next step. Now that I have all the guide rods and everything else in place, it was time to drill the holes to hold the blade. So I first used my bit and brace with a larger uh, bit to make a clearance hole for the head of the bolts that I was going to use, that I did use rather, to attach the blade to the body. After some fiddling around with uh, different bits, I then used a six millimeter drill bit to drill a hole straight through the body. I always love using a bit and brace for some reason. It's just kind of relaxing for me. And there's a little snail coming out the other side. flipped that around and drilled from the other side so that the hole would be clean and perfect. After I drilled the holes, I test fitted the screws to make sure the heads were below the surface of the wood because I didn't want it to interfere with the fence when the fence was completely closed and everything was good. Next, I fitted the blade so that I could drill the holes through the metal. I got my punch and put two little divots in the metal of the blade so that the drill bit wouldn't wander when I was drilling through it. And I brought it over to the drill press to drill my holes. Here I am just cleaning up the holes a little bit. I countersunk them after I drilled the smaller holes so that the washers would fit flush with the body and tightened everything up. I had to use a little crescent wrench to do that, but the blade fit nice and tight and firm and is not going anywhere. So after that, I test fitted the whole unit. You can see I found some uh, shorter thumb screws with white plastic tops that I'm using for the thumb screws on the fence. They fit perfectly as well. And everything lined up very, very nicely, which I was very happy about. feels good in the hand too. The next step was just cleaning up the edges again with a block plane, putting chamfers on all sides, 
so that it feels nice in your hand. After I had all the chamfers done, it was ready to assemble. Put the thumb screws in first. And then I attached the fence to the body of the plane. So before I put linseed oil and my logo mark on it, I decided to give it a little test run using some bits of uh, 2x4 that I had in the scrap wood box. I had to make sure that the blade would cut parallel to the sides. And this being a new blade from the Japanese saw, uh, it cuts very well, which means I shouldn't have to replace it for a very, 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 very long time. As you can see, it went straight through the 2x4, no problem. to test it on the end grain as well and also make sure that the curves would line up on all sides that I cut. And there you go. As you can see, the lines, the curves I should say, line up perfectly on all sides which will make resawing the wood very easy. And I was very happy with how everything came out. Thanks for watching.